Very early in the morning, when you wake up, the first thing you do is water. You can't have time to do other jobs. You load your donkeys and go a very, very far place. And you can go the whole day, the whole day, eight good hours or even nine and even ten to fetch water. It's the duty of uh, a woman to go out and get water. The mother wakes up very early, maybe around 4 a.m., and then, and then maybe one hour later sets off maybe for two or three hours' walk. And this part there is no water. The source of water is only the water which is collected maybe on ponds and, and on, on streams. And the water which could be found is shared among by the, the wildlife, the people, and the, the, the livestock. This water problem has also brought about health issues. So this water is not clean. It's very dangerous for human consumption. Lack of water is, is really a major problem. You know, water and life are inseparable. Livestock die. After the cows die, people are threatened. And sometimes people die of starvation because they don't have food. The area is so dry. We don't have uh, rivers. We don't have wells. You see, the water is not enough. The, the water that is available is in the highlands. All the masses were moved from the highlands, called the Laikipia Highlands, were moved down to the Rift Valley. My grandmother is 104 years. She was forced in 1911, and she remembers very well walking away. The colonial system came in, and it took away a lot of mass island, followed by two other governments, African governments, which also robbed the Maasai a lot of land. I thought it was the responsibility of the government to provide water to its citizens. Because they use the holes, small holes. The water is no, it is no more. So I'm viewing this as a violation of, 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 of human rights. As education comes in, as modernization comes in, it also introduces a concept of individualism, a kind of capitalism. And this continues to, you know, widen the gap between the rich and the poor. Most of the people who run the government are just like uh, Europeans. They are Western, they, they are Westernized, and they, they don't live in the community, so they don't know the hardships which the Maasai face. The government knows very well that this people have this problem and they have been reluctant to, to, to drill boreholes or you know, to, prov to, to provide water to the community. We live in the Rift Valley. 
We live in northern Tanzania and southern Kenya. If someone doesn't know where Kenya is, just look for the equator and follow it like this until you come to a place called Kenya. I am a Maasai. This is a, a tribe, a, a pastoralist tribe, which keeps livestock and uh, nomadic in that matter. You know, they move from one place to another. We lack saliva. Uh, because of the water that we do not have. And take the, uh, the back of the tree and chew the, uh, the, 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 the back uh, to make his or her mouth um, uh, wet again. Praise the Lord. Long ago, or many years we have lived on the valley here, and nobody has ever imagined even that there will be water at this place. Hallelujah. We only want to thank God because of this precious gift. When I see a, a machine or a driller uh, just at this place, I remember one thing, that God says, I will bless you abundantly if you only come or give your life unto me. Praise the Lord. We can see the equipment is here and uh, we are very happy about that and uh, at least now uh, we have hope. Prepare his room, and heaven and nature see, and heaven and nature see, and heaven and heaven and nature see.